Hi, I'm Andrea from Together and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, what we mean by this phrase rare disease and the reason that I want to talk to you about it is last Friday I wrote a blog about a film that I saw at Cambridge Rare Disease Network's um, Rare Fest uh, did online this year and the film was called Journey of Hope and it's by a company called the same but different it's a community interest company that aims to represent um, people with rare conditions rare diseases in the media in a very realistic positive and realistic light um, and this film was really very very beautiful it, was, it really followed uh, or interviewed uh, three sets of parents of children that had been identified with rare diseases at different points in their lives and the parents themselves were at different points in their journey um, sort of in their understanding of life with their child that had rare diseases and it was very very moving but from that um, came came this sort of gurgling realization about the in myself about the term rare disease and how it's very rarely used outside of medical society and outside of the rare disease community. And I think the reason for that is it's a very misunderstood phrase. Um, and, and I'll give you, for instance, um, a few years ago, I was invited to go along um, to represent the association that I'm in um, from the rare condition, the rare disease that I have um, to a rare disease tea party which I found very entertaining. And But when I said to my husband that I was going to a rare disease tea party, he was like, but you're not diseased. And I think that that kind of summed up uh, the perspective of the phrase rare disease uh, or disease on its own. And I think the reason for that is that there's a, there's a uh, by and large, there's a misunderstanding of really what the word means. And if we look at the old French roots of the word, there's two words it comes from. And I know I'm going to mispronounce these, um, so I'm just going to do it with my very British accent. So the first is dis, meaning a lack of, and ease. The second, um, comfort, so a lack of comfort. That's all it means, a lack of comfort. But then also if we look at um, the way... Um, the word is used in the medical community. Um, it's used in within a phrase usually. So it might be disease on its own. And but then also they will say infectious disease. So or rare disease. So if you if you realise that you're using it in a number of ways paired with other words, then you begin to understand that actually the disease itself doesn't mean something that's infectious or dirty, unclean, needs a really good wash. It doesn't mean that at all. Um, but there are diseases that are infectious. So the common cold is infectious and the COVID-19 is clearly infectious. Um, those things are infectious. But then you also have diseases. There's a disease that's not infectious, but it's not rare. And those something that would come under that would be Down syndrome, for instance. Um, Haemophilia, diabetes, these are diseases and they're not rare. Um, on the other hand, you have diseases that are rare. So what is it that makes them rare? Well, there are different definitions around the world, but in Europe, um, the definition of a rare disease is a disease that uh, affects fewer than one in 2,000 people in society. Okay? So we've got, we've, so far, we've got um, the roots of the word, dis and ease. We've got the way medics use the word in, in conjunction with other words to further define and describe what sort of disease we're talking about. And we've got the idea of how, um, what, what sort of disease you would have to, or what incidence you would have of a disease that would make it rare. Um, so we, we, we've, we sort of looked at that now. Um, what we have to think about then is um, we have a Google dictionary definition. If you Google what rare disease is, you'll find all sorts of dictionary definitions. But this one says that um, a disease is a, 
um, a malfunction, a change in the structure or function of a living being, a living creature or plant, okay? And it produces specific symptoms that are related and um, it might affect a particular location on the body or locations on the body or in, in the plant. Um, and then not the result of an accident, injury. Uh, these are things that are naturally occurring. Quite often with a rare disease, these things happen in, uh, the, you know, this disease shows symptoms in a number of structures in the body. Um, so you might have a cluster of symptoms and um, affecting specific locations, but a number of specific locations. Um, so rare disease, we know, would affect one in 17 people in this country. That's 3.5 million people in the UK. So although you might know, you might not know many people with a particular rare disease. So for instance, I have Noonan syndrome, you might know me, but you might, you're might less likely to know many more people than me unless you're actually also in the same association as I am. So um, the fact that there are 6,000 known rare diseases in the world, and there will be more, and there are more being identified all the time, then that you, you you see that actually where although individually a syndrome a, a rare disease might be rare together collectively they're very common and you will know lots of people that have a rare disease more than a handful in your life have a rare disease whether that's hemophilia diabetes Noonan syndrome silver Russell syndrome you know you know Williams syndrome lots and lots of different syndromes you will know them. Now, 99% of genetic diseases are themselves rare. So most genetic diseases are a rare disease. And because of that, because they're rare, it's very, very difficult to be diagnosed with a, a specific disease. And, sorry, that's where we come to a diagnost diagnostic odyssey. It's, it's a term that you hear quite a lot in the rare disease community when we're talking about diagnosis and how the journey to diagnosis can be really difficult. The clues in the phrase, so odyssey, it's an adventure, isn't it, with lots of twists and turns and difficulties to overcome. And that is certainly the case for diagnosis of a rare disease. And we know that the average time from onset of, of, of uh, symptoms to diagnosis for someone in the rare disease society community is four and a half years okay so four years from onset of diagnosis to uh, onset of symptoms to diagnosis it's a long time to wait and in the meantime you're missing out on essential services you're missing out on on uh, you know like timely support and that's really really difficult so what, what is the reason for that? Why does it take so long? Well, there's multiple reasons for it. One, rare, rare diseases are so rare that it's impossible for every doctor, every medic, to know every symptom of every syndrome and to put their finger on, on the button each time is really, really hard. Another is that um, a rare disease is likely to be multi-systemic so <coughs> it's likely to affect different systems in your body so you might have a heart condition so you might be seeing a cardiologist because of your heart condition you might have hearing issues so you might be seeing an audiologist you might be you might have um uh, problems with your blood so you'll be seeing a different medic for those things and because medics tend to work in very different departments and they don't necessarily communicate that readily, uh, you know, cross-department communication doesn't happen as, as, as often as it could um, because, it, because of the way systems are set up. So the cardiologist doesn't know there's also a hearing issue. The, you know, the audiologist doesn't know that there's a problem with the blood. You know, that all those things. So 
it's very hard for somebody to actually put all the pieces together, the pieces of the puzzle together and think, hey, there's more than one thing going on. We need to check this out. So it can take a long time for people to really realise. And the key to it really is maybe a GP, but even your GP is going to really struggle and they need support. So if you have a rare disease, and you're yet to find out what it is. At Together, we'd obviously advise you to, to seek medical support. Um, ask for genetic testing. There are lots of lots of rare diseases now where the gene changes, the gene um, mutations that have caused that disease have been identified. Um, so ask for a panel to be done. Get your genome checked against all those known rare diseases. They'll check. They'll know which gene, which genes, um, which diseases that are more likely to be um, the issue for your case. Get them to be checked against that. And if the results come back that still your gene is unknown, or that it's such a rare disease that there aren't any other um, support networks out there, then these are the people to get in touch with. So Swan is um, a support group for um, unknown, undi unnamed diseases, unnamed rare diseases, and they, they will help you. Um, Genetic Alliance and Rare Disease UK, they are parent groups of, well, Rare Disease UK is parent group of Genetic Alliance and Swan UK, so they, they're all groups that can help you. If you haven't got a patient advocacy group, if you've done your internet search, and you can't find a patient advocacy group um, for the syndrome that you've been diagnosed with, then Find a Cure is a place to go. They can help you if you want to set up a patient advocacy group. They can give you advice and support on how to go about that. And, um, and that would be really, really interesting. If you do do that, please get in touch with us. We'd love to know more. Um, Medics for Rare Disease is a, um, a charity that's working really hard to raise awareness and, uh, amongst the medical community, especially among student doctors, um, of the things that, yes, okay, basically rare diseases are difficult. Uh, it's, it's impossible for you to know about every rare disease, but actually, individually, the, the, well, the syndrome might be rare, together the issues that are experienced by rare disease patients are very, very common. And so if you have like a, a perspective on, um, if you have a patient that comes to you that has uh, problems in a number of areas, not just one, then perhaps it's time to think about rare disease. Medics for Rare Disease do a lot of work in this area, trying to raise awareness of this and, and support um, and push for better diagnosis systems in the UK for people with rare conditions. These are fantastic people to check out. Check them out, get onto them. Social media campaigns. These, the groups that I've just shown you, there's an, they have a, a few um, campaigns on, on Twitter and Facebook, Instagram. And these are just a couple of them, well, three of them, to be precise, for you to check out. So one in 17, and dare to think rare, these are campaigns that are generally about um, rare disease. So check them out online. Uh, jump on board, use the hashtags, and, um, and have a look at Journey of Hope. It really is something that you will you will identify with. And if you if you're not in if you're not in this or watching this because you have a rare disease yourself or a, a family member who does, but you're interested then you'll, you'll empathise, if not identify. Um, so check out Journey of Hope and follow it and hashtag it and get, get it known out there because it is a wonderful film. Um, and together, we're here to help you. So if you have issues in this area that you'd really, really like to talk to someone about, please do get in touch with us. We really would like to help you. Um, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, well, we've got to get used to the Instagram thing. Um, and find us on our uh, website and all the contact emails are on there. Um, so do get in touch with us. If we can help you, we will. And if we can't, we'll find somebody who can. Okay, hopefully. Thank you.
Take care. Bye-bye.